What is going on, everybody? Let me just slowly and carefully position these for your maximum viewing benefit. Still trying to get this line up. The, the, uh, how, how the screen lines up um, when I'm looking through my camera before I live stream and how it starts um, immediately. <laughs> so I'm trying to get everything on screen the right way. And I'm also trying to get through my own ad. Here we go. We are getting to the main thing here. Oh, I can actually move them up a bit. Interesting. So what you guys see on YouTube is different than what I see is the border in my phone. I always forget that that is the case. I may have, I may or may not have just spit somewhere amidst these knives. Don't worry, I'm all healed up and I'm not, this is gonna bug me for the whole rest of the live stream. Proper spacing with other people's treasures is of the utmost importance. So yeah, okay. Ah. There we go. What is going on? Oh, we have some purple helmets in here tonight. That sounded super weird. <laughs> what I mean by that is um, <laughs> the Knights of the Round. Anybody who's watching this um, video in the future or live right now, if you look in the comments section, uh, you'll see that some of the knight helmets have actually turned purple. There's some blue ones, some green ones, some purple ones. So basically those are my uh, channel members. If you want to join the channel membership, there is, of course, a blue outlined join button um, under the video and also um, right beside my, uh, my uh, channel logo on the main banner of the page. You can join. It's a small monthly fee of, I think it's $1.99. And you gain access to the tiered badging system where you start out with a blue helmet. Uh, after a month, it changes to green. After three months, it changes to purple. After uh, six months, it changes to red. And after a year it changes to gold. You'll also gain access to, knights, if you'd like to raise your swords, now would be a fantastic time. A uh, plethora of, uh, there we go, <laughs> they it up for a second, a plethora of different Excalibur emojis. These are exclusive emojis to the channel. And as you can see, some of the knights are actually raising swords. They are themed after, um, you know, some, uh, some popular uh, movies and video games stuff like that, but yeah, we have a lot of fun with that So anybody who decides they want to Utilize that can join and we will all collectively raise our swords so to speak in your honor uh, Live during the live stream. We always do that. It's always fun uh, Super chat is up anybody wanting to take advantage of super chat. You are welcome to there are weird dancing pairs and Poop emojis and a bunch of other stuff that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. What is going on? There's already 51 people in here tonight. Oh my goodness. I am so excited. Um, something this last week was insane. I, I don't understand what was going on with, uh, yeah, Shaker, you got a couple up here. Um, don't understand what's going on with the sub volume. <laughs> I've never seen so many people sub so quickly, but I'm very appreciative of it. If this is your first time in the live stream, welcome. Um, and if it's not your first time in the live stream, welcome. Um, I decided to lay out as many knives as were safe. I mean, I know that picture was super, um, thank you for the congrats. Uh, I know that picture was super enticing, but the truth is, is it's not safe. And it's also not a good um, financial plan to keep all that stuff on a table all together and haphazardly close to the edge. Um, so I put as many cool knives on the table as I deemed safe uh, while I do what I do. And, and I've got some cool stuff out here, so I figured this would be entertaining. Zell is in here. What's up, Zell? Arrowheads is in here. What's up, Jeff? Danny T's in here. Shaker's in here. Um, I'm so excited to see that there are knights that have made it to the three-month mark. That is awesome. Absolutely. Kyle Roberts is in here. Oh, my goodness. Yes, yes. Lots of... Lots of interesting things. Um, maybe we should switch one, put it out where people can see it. Yeah, because this is a new guy, and I figure somebody will ask a question about that at some point. Kiefer's in here. John Walker's in here. What's up? What's up? Um, yeah, but thank you so much um, for uh, being a part of my channel and subscribing. And, I mean, I, like... I could say a whole bunch of cliche stuff like I never expected to get here, but like you guys know that nobody expects to get to any point. I mean, I, I thought that when I hit 100 subs 
honestly, it's the, the, when you when you hit the 100 sub mark, you're like, holy cow, there's 100 people who care what I have to say. Um, but um, yeah, I, I am very appreciative of that. Um, we might do something a little bit more celebratory at another time in terms of possibly a giveaway. Um, but uh, I figured for right now, and especially considering you know all the stuff that's going on in the world right now, um, we're just going to do a live celebration to just have some fun. That's what that's what it's all about, right? Slice it, I see. What is going on? Thanks for coming in, buddy. Excuse me, hydration break. I can finally do that because I'm not sick. Everybody thought I was uh, I was done for with my cough over the last two weeks, but uh, no, um, that was a that was the common cold, <laughs> and everybody in my house got it, and um, so now we're all better. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Zell, everybody's saying RIP anyway. <laughs> Hang on. Oh, my goodness. Um, what is that little baby knife's name to the right of the Holt? Kershaw Unboxing is its new competition. This, uh, this guy right here, this is the Curtis Knives Custom. Um, gosh, bless it. Is it the ODT? Yeah, the little ODT frame lock flipper. Um, this was a gift from Jeff and is a full custom knife. It's running on bearings and it is, it's not chisel ground, but it looks like a chisel. It's actually got two sharpened edges and this is all titanium. Um, this is one of my favorite. So that little teeny tiny pocket that's made for like a pocket watch in your jeans, that fits perfectly. I love that thing. Absolutely. Oh, RIP to my live stream is probably what's going on right now. Goodness gracious. I really hope that fixes itself. There we go. Yeah, it kind of does look like a peanut if peanuts were um, about an inch by an inch and three quarters and were shaped like a rectangle. <laughs> thank you for the congrats. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Andrew got pulled for the Holt Spectre lottery 10 minutes ago. Oh my gosh, dude. Well... Um, I hope you pick it up, buddy, because these things are expensive but worth it. Um, absolutely. What uh, what variant of Spectre was it? V3, V4. I saw he had four, uh, as he calls them, nudes up, which looked like this. Uh, the all the all tie, the monochromatic ones. So yeah, congratulations, buddy. Um, I hope you take the uh, take the opportunity there. V4 feathered bronze, sick man. You're gonna love that V4. <laughs> Excuse me. As I said in the review, you can't fail it because um, there's no place where you can accidentally put the wrong type of pressure on the frame lock because the frame lock's not there. Uh, Madog Jones, let's see that reverse flick of the 8015 custom. <laughs> You're trying to get me to drop this knife um, on top of all these other beautiful knives. All right. Uh, thank you very much for the donation. Hang on here. Oh, this is tough. Is this going to be an index finger flip? Almost. Almost. There we go. How's that? Does that work for you? <laughs> Slice dicey. Thank you so much. Congrats on 15K. Well deserved, my friend. No one works harder than you. I hope you run out of steam. <laughs> Soon as I can catch you back. Oh, man. Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate that, Slicey. Um, I would argue that there's one person who works just as hard as I do. Uh, and that is slicey dicey. Um, as, I mean, especially here lately, the guy's been putting out two a day, and his content's great. I watch it every single day. And if you're not subscribed, I don't know what you're doing with your life, um, because I'm not the only one out here uh, by a long shot. And I mean, he's definitely somebody you guys should go check out. Thank you very much, slicey. I really appreciate that. Um, Jeremy, are you a huge tough life fan, Zell? <laughs> yeah, Zell, aren't you? Let us know, man, if you're a fan of the, uh, the... Raise your swords! Seth Balderson, welcome to the Knights of the Round. Everyone gingerly... Uh, raise... That's <laughs> insane. Let's gingerly raise our tips. How about that? Uh, a celebratory effort, absolutely. Got some Frost Morns, got some uh, Master Swords, Blades of Chaos. We've got... Of course, the Energy Sword, the uh, Anduril, the Broken Blade, the Minecraft Diamond Sword, and uh, uh, Kylo Ren's lightsaber from the new Star Wars series. I think I named all the ones that I've got in there. Oh, and the Buster Sword. There we go. Buster Sword. And JH, welcome to the Knights of the Round. Keep those swords coming. 
Let's celebrate the new members of the Knights of the Round. Absolutely. Somebody's throwing up forks and knives. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I swear, my favorite part of these live streams, I mean, aside from the obvious, like interacting and talking and joking and playing with knives and stuff, right, is we have another Knight of the Round, NY Blade EDC. Keep those swords coming. Absolutely. Welcome to the Knights of the Round. Um, aside from the, you know, talking about knives and, and enjoying it, I just love seeing all the swords of my American in celebration of new members. Somebody's <laughs> tossing peanuts. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's a blast, man. Um, I appreciate that. All right. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. We absolutely are, uh, you know, very, a very welcoming crowd. Absolutely. It's always fun to have new members. That's always great. Uh, congrats on 15k. Thank you very much into the rabbit hole. I appreciate that. Uh, Danny T says, please bring out the Kershaw hinderer as a, si oh, wait, 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 let me go back up. Please bring out the Kershaw hinderer as a size compared to the ODT. The one that I unboxed on Friday, hang on. I got it in my, I got it in my third display case over here. What you're seeing on the table is nowhere near the amount of knives that's off camera. Hang on. I got one hung up on the wall. This guy, the, uh, the, the, the ember, is that what this is? Hang on, does it say? I can't see it. No. Anyways, here's the, here you go. Bloop. There's your size comparison. Or should I hold it up? Okay, here we go. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Everybody's just saying yep. <laughs> oh my goodness. Super cool. That's one of the only hinder knives that I have not handled. Oh my goodness. Speaking of hinder knives, would you guys like to hear something crazy? Hang on. I'm going to build up the tension by leaning back and having a drink real quick. This guy right there is sold and gone, except for the titanium scale. The titanium scale stays with me. That is a crown of crowns amongst, uh, well, it's a crown of crowns on this channel. It, it, it is only bestowed upon the current XM18 uh, three and a half inch that I have. The DLT uh, exclusive Fullard Spear is sold. And um, yeah, so there's something else coming to the channel uh, next week. So yeah, there you go. I'll let you guys chew on that for a little bit. Um, <laughs> people are talking about Carol Baskin. Um, let's see here. Wow, MC is selling his XM18 for another one. Shocking. You're exactly right. Uh, the uh, I, I almost can feel the sarcasm coming out of my own voice. Um, I don't. You know, this one made it a while. As far as all the XM18s that I've had. Um, yeah, that's that's true. Kyle said, uh, said I'd sell it during the uh, during the unboxing. I did say that I'd sell it. Um, yeah. Um, so this this and a lot of other Hinder X Mateens have been placeholders. As soon as they announced Gen Six, I, I kind of knew what I wanted. Um, I wanted to hand, I wanted to get my hand on a slicer, and I wanted to get my hands on a no choil, uh, or I'm sorry, a, a non flipper specifically because I was like. You know, amidst the three that I really want, one of these has to be absolutely perfect. And the three that I 100% needed to get my hands on, um, stuck, save, like stuck out of time, two different designs. The Harpoon Spanto and the Spanto are automatically considered like uh, right up there in perfect range. But I needed to handle a flipper um, slicer and I needed to handle a. Uh, uh, um, uh, what am I trying to say? Oh, a non-flipper. And then there's one more. There was one more that I needed to handle. Uh, Blake McLendon, welcome to the Knights of the Round. Everybody, throw your swords up because that is super fun and I like to make everybody feel welcome. Blades of Chaos. We have uh, Jeff just using the basic sword. That's fine. <laughs> I don't. I honestly don't think Jeff is into any of the other um, games or movies that are associated with the other blade, so that's fine. Um, and yeah, there you go. You've got the whole plethora. Look at all those swords. It looks like fireworks, but I, I legitimately like to imagine a, you know, like a crowded room, you know, uh, of knights just raising swords. John Walker, congrats, sir. Uh, you, congrats, you, sir, are the Excalibur of the knife world. Thank you. That warms my heart and makes me feel super cool. It also bolsters my ego, um, which, uh, 
recording. My wife needs no more bolstering. But thank you very much, Mr. John Walker. Um, so anyways, um, yeah, there was a third that I needed to handle before I could decide which one was 100% perfect. And I just got notification from Scott Whittington that what I was waiting for is not planned anytime soon. So I fell back on my plan B, which will arrive later this week. Uh, and I'll explain exactly what that means when uh, we get there. Um, please show the sigil. Sure. Check this out, guys. Oh, even the blade is gold. <laughs> this is a golden sigil. We will be unboxing this next week. Um, this is from Mr. Shaker MT. This is the first time I've ever actually held a, uh, a sigil ever. So this is super duper cool. Absolutely. I'm pretty excited about that. I love what Microtech does with the bronze work on the um, on the blades. I wish that that was something that um, more knife makers did do. Hang on. Let's see. Where's me? Uh, let me see. Yeah, everybody's talking about what they're carrying. Metal complex. What knife on the table has the most powerful thwack? I voted on the SOCOM. Um, the most powerful thwack on the table. Um, at the door off. Oh boy, the F95 is powerful. Multi row bearing system makes it that four inch blade. Pocket tank coming in hot. Show them the true King Arthur knife. MC. <laughs> What's oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Hey, hang on pocket tank sending sending uh wait did, did pocket tank send hold on two of you guys sent like Excalibur themed knives for um you know the quest of the perfect uh, budget knives so I'm gonna show them both. <laughs> She's uh the conclusion is what are we we're about halfway there. So yeah, um, and this thing actually, according to a lot of people, ha has a picture of me on it, uh, holding Excalibur. So yeah, that's pretty sweet. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, hang on a sec. Let me put. I have a safe spot for these. They they do uh, they do have to remain. Everything has a spot, and that's how I keep track of everything. So it's always a nightmare cleaning up after a, a live stream. But everything has to stay stay in exactly the same spot, or I'll go crazy. Um, Kiefer says, wait till you see what I got you. Oh boy, I can't wait. Excuse me. My 31 is perfect. Uh, I'm just carrying my video. It has no stick other than that. It's always in my pocket. You're carrying the 31? Slicey, did you buy that? Did you buy the 31? I really like the 31. It's amazing the difference that without the uh, alignment hole in it, how much more I like the look of it. Oh my gosh. Um, let's see here. Most powerful thwack, the peanut, of course, yeah. Yeah, because you have to crap whip it open. Whatever, I can say what I want. You have to shit whip it open. Um, <laughs> but it does feel good. It's super smooth, absolutely. Ah, excuse me, excuse me. It's just sparkling water, everybody. Just cans of sparkling water. Knifer Man, anybody know if Blade Show is happening still? I'm hunting the Mini Arius. Um, I don't know. My guess is probably not um, because I don't I don't feel like, I mean, like, we're going to, what they say, you know, we're going to get over the hump soon, but the, the end of this and, and, and business as usual is long from a reality. So my guess is probably not, but... Um, hey, I mean, fingers crossed, right? I mean, let's, let's, I, I, I love being pleasantly surprised, absolutely. So, Beaverly, uh, thanks for the donation, buddy. Show them the real new unboxing knife that I sent. <laughs> Here's Zell's contribution. Uh, Wizard Crystal Ice Dagger um, plus four charisma, I think, or was it plus eight charisma? I can't remember what your, uh, how much charisma you enchanted this bad boy with, but uh, three dragons uh, heads made out of plastic. Right, cast of course, because that's you know a sign of uh, master, master forging. <laughs> I, I love that thing. I I'm legitimately convinced it's actually uh, imbued with charisma. Uh, Kiefer, thanks, buddy. Five dollars to see the Delica. Of course, the Delica is always right here. It's always sitting in the same place, right? <laughs> oh my gosh, fidget factor off the charts of this guy. You guys want to know what maximum crit fidget factor looks like? 
That's what it looks like. It turns out if you just dis if you just create a backlock that doesn't work, um, you max out fidget factor. You can uh, the fidget rate of that thing is like a thousand beats per second. Um, let's see here. Uh, hey, I'm see it. Long time watcher, first time commenter. Is there a knife you were very excited for, but it didn't live up to expectations? Ooh, ooh good question. What make what maker and model do I want to throw under the bus right now? Let me think about how I want to answer this. Um, uh, didn't live up to the expectations. All right, here's how I'll handle this. I know exactly how I'm gonna handle this. Um, so. Zell says five dollars to see the tough one. I'll answer your question, but I, for whatever reason, I feel compelled to just let Zell see the GD tough light every time. Every time we do a live stream, there it is, still red, still off eight, still twenty five bucks. By the way, you can find it in the link in the description in my Amazon store. Uh, just pull it, pull open the link, check out uh, Cold Steel knives along with whatever else you want to buy. Sometimes people buy weird stuff like Nilla wafers and. Uh, ointments and various things <laughs> but uh, yeah there's knives in there too not that I have anilla wafers and ointments on my store but the way that it works is if you go in there you know you look at my store and then you go somewhere else and you're like yeah I could use some nilla wafers uh, yeah that that also counts um, anyways um, the one of the biggest disappointments biggest disappointments was the very first Medford that I ever handled uh, and this was way back this was long 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 back when they really started to get going if I remember correctly the very first Medford I ever handled was an was an OG 187 and uh, the difference between what they're doing with the uh, 187 now and what it was when it first came out is night and day oh my goodness this is wonderful the way, I mean, yeah, it's this big, chunky, hulking thing, but let me tell you, like, this is professionally made. Uh, it, it's perfect. I mean, not, I mean, you know, take that word with a grain of salt. In terms of, like, what I expect from Medford and, like, the geometry and stuff like that, man, this is polished. And this particular version is in 3V, uh, and then it has this awesome uh, anodizing pattern on it, sort of subdued anodizing pattern. The first uh, one that I handled, I bought on the secondary market for way too much money. And it was absolutely a kick in the nuts. I hated it. I was so bummed out. And then I got rid of it, and then I bought another variant that was a little newer down the road. It was a little better. This thing's awesome. Absolutely. Okay, sorry. I talked for a little bit. Let me get back to the comments. What knife did you have high expectations for but still blew you away? Hold Spectre not allowed. Um, let me think. Knives that I had a really, really high expectations for but still blew me away um i would say the the one that got me the most like i i had high expectations for it and then it absolutely was like it was like a roundhouse kick to the face the um the les george um vecp v3 was so much better than i thought it was going to be and i i honestly was like yeah it's probably pretty good i'm pretty pumped it kind it looks like a 400 hundred dollar knife um, I'm excited to. I bought one off the secondary market for like 385. Actually, I think they go for 425, 450, brand new. Man, that thing is wonderful. If you ever get a chance to get your hands on a VECP V3, talk about a purpose-built knife that has all the polishings of something that honestly costs more money in today's $400, $450 knife world. Wonderful. Um, bandwidth is the bandwidth getting shot? Yeah. So we're having a huge problem with our internet today, guys. Um, I'm hoping that um, that just does not continue to be the case. Oh, hey, let's do that thing where, where everybody likes the live stream just because it makes me feel good about myself. Feel free to like or dislike the live stream right now, whatever, because that's kind of how likes and dislikes work on YouTube, if you didn't know. If you get super frustrated with me during a video and decide to dislike my video, it still helps me. <laughs> but... Um, if you want to, just to make me feel good right now, like the video and bolster my ego some more, not that I need any more help with that, it would be greatly appreciated because it's funny and for whatever reason it's turned into kind of a tradition during the live streams. It's a sneaky way to get people to like it, right? Pretend like I'm indifferent and act, you know, oh, it's, you know what it is? It's, it's all the charisma I'm getting from the wizard ice dragon, right? That's what's happening. 
Thank you for all the likes. I saw someone dislike it, whoever you were, and then you retracted your dislike. Thank you. Yeah, despite my um, my my seeming uh, confidence there, it's pretty synthetic. Yeah, I have a pretty. I've got a glass ego. Oh, there it is again. No, no, my heart. Oh, um, let's see. Could Justin the Hunter? Could my guys sneak on? Yeah, they actually. I don't know why I didn't pull them back out here. Um, I was just sort of like scrambling to get everything set up in a way that was safe um, and where everything wasn't so close together. But yeah, I'll get I'll get your boys back out here. We can swap them out with some of the stuff that everybody sees every single day, right? Uh, there's the Kaiser Shoal and the what do we want to move out of the way here? Little, 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 little. How about the Spider Co Pair Three? Uh, there's the T0850. Am I right about that? I always forget with this guy. Yeah, 0804. Sorry about that. 0804. CF. Even though there's only one version of it. I don't know why they have to put the CF in there. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Uh, let's see here. Woo! <laughs> That's what I imagine your voice sounds like. Because people out here in Kansas do that for no reason. Like if you stop at a stoplight and you, you know... Jerry from the gas station is like, hey, where are you headed? You're like, Walmart. He goes, Ew! you know, like that's just what people do. It's not really a whole conversation. It's just someone audibly exclaiming, you know, that what you're going to do is something that you're going to do. So bye. Like that's, that's, it's just an odd interaction between people. Um, let's see. Uh, Camille Marceau, I'm so sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name correctly. Hi, which would you choose, ZT0562 TI or Spidey Ship? ZT0562 TI. Oh, God. So much. Listen, a lot of people love the Spidey Ship. And I, I won't deny that, it, I mean, it is a well-made knife. It's a very purpose-built knife. I honestly don't like it. I just really, really don't like it. But I love the ZT0562 TI. One of the best knives in that price range that exists right now. And honestly, it'll, ta it'll take something really special to knock that out. I just put that on a, a recent list of one of the greatest folding knives of all time. And, um, <laughs> uh, and then also like one of the greatest flippers of all time. Plus it's Kinder. So maybe I'm a little biased, but Slicey will tell you if he's still in here. We're at 110 right now, guys and gals. Uh, the record's 152. If for whatever reason we managed to break that record tonight, I will absolutely do a giveaway uh, next week. We will do a giveaway on a random knife that I've got sitting over here to the left that I can see and you can't. But somebody will win it if we get up there. If not, whatever. That's totally fine. Um, let's see. Therapeutic Edge says the 0562 in any dress is just a superior knife. I, I really think so, too. I mean, the only thing, in my opinion, that you're going to benefit between the two is... Uh, I mean, there's a bunch of arguable little, little tiny nitpicky things, but if you're a big thumb hole guy, yeah. I mean, and also, like, if you need, like, mega thinness behind the edge, okay. But the 0562 still is fairly thin behind the edge, um, but you get a whole bunch of other cool stuff with it. Um, let's see. Give away an Adolica. No, it'll be better than Adolica. I mean, no, I mean, I can't. How could I ever compare something to the Adolica? It's such a majestic uh, relic. Uh, how could... <laughs> How could anything compare uh, in the blinding light of its excellence? <laughs> uh, the double clutch on the 0562. Yeah, all right. Fair enough. The 0562 has a little bit of double clutch. You do kind of adapt around it, which is honestly the case with any knife that's got double clutch, unless it's really bad. But, yeah, it does have it, for sure. Um, MC is a noodle head. I get called a noodle head by somebody every single time. and I'm pretty sure it's this... This, uh, this this guy, this gentleman named Justin the Hunter, but I can never remember because I'm always hydrating. <laughs> uh, let's see. Where can I get an XM18 Skinner? Uh, you should go to USA Made Blade. Um, so right here, actually, I have an XM18 3.5-inch Skinny Skinner, which, truthfully, I'm coming to the conclusion is a better knife in terms of a tool than the, the full-thickness XM18. It's easier to flip, it's lighter weights, it's thinner behind the edge, and you still feel like you're carrying a robust, capable tool. And it's also the same price. And you can get modular hardware for it. And they make all the extra scales and blah, blah, blah. So it's really the same thing. It's just more performance oriented and it's more comfortable to flip. You're not coming down on quite a as, as wide a platform or wide a, a 
you know, you're not coming down on a on quite as wide an area with all that crazy jimping. Let's see here. Um, let's see. You see, if you if you're on Insta DM, oh oh wait, that's Kiefer. Sorry. Can you compare the size of the whippersnapper and small Sabenza? Yes, I will. Absolutely. Uh, where's the small guy? There he is. And whipper, whipper snapper. There we go right there. Almost the same length. Let me just go ahead and open them up here. And there's your overall size comparison. Um, yeah, they're like, I mean, is the whipper snapper slightly, okay. Whipper snapper is slightly longer, slightly longer. Uh, M Deacon, love your channel, MC. Keep up the great work. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Thanks for coming in and saying that, making me feel good about myself. Um, I I don't know what's happening with the uh, the sub situation. Um, like, I mean, it's normal. Like a normal day is like like sixty five or so and here lately it's been like 110 120 a day and i can't it just looks like every every there's more subs from all sources i'm not really sure what exactly what individual source is creating the situation christopher smith welcome to the knights of the round thank you so much for joining everybody raise your swords spam the chat and annoy everybody else right uh, th that's the sales pitch i guess but seriously i do that's why i made those sword emojis is because it's fun you know, I can't remember the first time that we did that where everybody raised swords, but I realized I was like, this is funny, but it's all exactly the same sword. Now I have a whole bunch of stuff. And you guys will have to, we're at 123 guys and gals, so we are slowly climbing to potentially the new record of 152. Uh, that's about 30 away, if my math is correct. Um, but yeah, you guys will have to remind me again what swords you want. Um, I know... Uh, you know, He-Man sword, uh, 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 the the sword that um, Lino uses in Thundercats, uh, Soul Edge. You know, there was a whole bunch that people wanted from the last live stream. But as soon as those new, you know, as as more members join, I get more slots to create more emojis. So as you know, when that happens, I'll have to make sure and, t and put those in there. My bootleg sword. <laughs> I'm tempted to make that. And put it in there. Oh my gosh. Do you like Persian style MC? If so, your favorite. So I only have one Persian style blade that I own, and it's this Todd Begg Steelcraft series three-quarter quake. And and this is probably, I mean, to be dead honest with you, this is one of the only Persian style blades that I actually enjoy. Unless I still haven't quite figured this out. The A Purvis Zerts, sometimes looking at it, it looked like a Persian style blade, but then I thought, wait, are the lines, is it an optical illusion? Does it look like a Persian style blade? And it's not. If the A-Purvis Zerks is truly a, a Persian style blade, that is my favorite one. If not, the uh, Bag Steelcraft series, three quarter Quaken is my favorite. Um, Boker Plus F3, I have not handled it. I don't, if I, if, if I had handled it, I would definitely give you my opinion. Absolutely. Benchmade Super Freak is awesome. Uh, this guy gets used quite a bit uh, outside. Um, you can see there, I mean, truthfully, whoops. Uh, truthfully, was that Justin that asked that question? In any case, it doesn't have a whole lot more wear on it from when you sent it to me. But this guy just like, uh, it, it's that thing is born to be a user knife. So honestly, I use that thing about as often as I use, well, not as often. But like in the same way that I use the rat, I mean, I'll just, I'll just use it because I love it. And I just have always wanted a knife that was a lot nicer than the rat that I could use in the same way, like without worrying, like, oh, I got to scratch on it. It's M4, you know? Oh, holy cow. Hang on. We've got people doing things. Corey G, welcome to the Knights of the Round. Thank you so much. Raise your swords for Corey G. Appreciate that, buddy. That was really cool. Uh, Zell said, raise your swords. If I should build MC an epic custom wooden sign when he hits 25k. Um, Zell, you did that right before <laughs> we had a new night. So it's it's all it's all happening, buddy. It's all happening. You don't have to do that. Um, I mean, but I also know that I can't there's nothing I can do if you decide to do something like that. I so I've got the one that you made right up here where I can see it, right in front of the uh, the set here. 
Um, really want to get my hands on a whole Spectre V4 after your recent video. Yeah, it is one of the most perfect folding knives that exists. And I mean, it's kind of like scarily out. Like it, it's kind of, it's a long shot. Like the, the thing that's in second place, you know, any, any knife in second place, there's like six or seven that can be in second place and they're kind of a ways off. Holt Spectre's above and beyond. Dr. Oetker, um, awesome, buddy. Um, that He's a patron. Thank you so much. Raise your swords. Welcome to the Knights of the Round. Raise your swords for Dr. Oetker. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. I don't know how to pronounce the vowels with the dots on top of them, but in any case, I very much appreciate that you are a patron and now a knight. Very, very cool. Thank you so much. I'm sure... <laughs> I'm wondering if, like, you know... If, if I'm losing people in the stream, because they're like, every time I ask a question, there's just a bunch of swords that come out of nowhere, and I can't. It's like everybody's comment get, gets pushed up by the swords. Oh, see, like, this works at 127 people, but I'm thinking, like, way down the road. If I've got 500 people in here, it'll be impossible, you know? So, I don't know, whatever. Maybe it'll just be something that we keep doing anyway. <laughs> I don't want to break tradition. Like, you guys know when I do reviews, I say the same stuff over and over again when like joking, like in this, you know, the Benjamin Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, I get the same intro, same outro. I do, I do that. I like, I like things to remain the same. Familiarity is very important to me. Shaker says at middle complex. Well, I just grabbed it. The spine does have a very slight curve in it. It does. Okay. Yeah, that's right. That's Shaker's. Um, so there you go. That'd be my favorite Persian style blade then. 132 people in here, guys and gals. We are 20 away from breaking my live stream record. What that means is, is if you're thinking about leaving to make a sandwich or go to the bathroom or do cartwheels in your backyard or whatever, don't do it because I want to break my record. And I, for whatever reason, I feel like that's more important than your cartwheels. Sorry, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Um, let's see here. Is a 940 a good steakhouse a good steakhouse knife? Like a knife to bring to a steakhouse? Yeah, I mean, I yeah, sure. Um, got my first bug out today. Uh, let's try it out before splurging on the rock scales. It's a lot less drop shutty than my Para 3 Lightweight. Let me tell you something. The bug out, that's my that was my first impression of it too, but that a lot of times that's just how benchmates are right off the bat. They do get very smooth. It will, and it'll seem like it's going to be impossible to, uh, to, to rub down that... Um, that axis bar, but it, it will. Don't feel like you have to add a bunch of lube. Don't do it. Just keep opening it. Keep closing it. It might take you four days. It might take you two weeks, but it does get smooth. Benchmade owners, you know, that will, will be able to tell you the same thing. At some point, your Benchmade will just, it'll just fall shut. Um, let's see here. Anyone know anyone that does custom coats? and work on knives. Um, yeah, there's quite a few people in the Instagram community that do that. For whatever reason, the names are escaping me. Um, but uh, Fanatic Edge, I think. I don't know what a coat is when in reference to a knife, but Fanatic Edge, I, I believe, does that kind of stuff. 136, people. Uh, as we draw closer, I'm going to keep announcing it in the hopes that people who are wanting to leave will stay in here to make me feel good. Um, let's see. Andy, hey, have you checked out the Quiet Carry Waypoint? No, but I've been told that I, <laughs> I've been told by many people that I need to check that out. Absolutely. So hopefully that's in the near future. I have so many. I'm getting to the point where I'm kind of nervous. I want to get through some reviews, get people get get their knives back to them. You know, Andrew Tools, uh, thank you for the donation, buddy. Uh, another another very uh, generous patron. Xerx having a Persian blade would make sense since Xerxes ruled over the Persian Empire. I did not put that together. You're exactly right. Also just traded my use 31 for a Praetorian tie. <laughs> Wait a sec. Are we tying in like the Praetorian Guard? Does that have to do with the same time period? Were those, did they do battle? Uh, the Praetorian Guard of the Emperor and the Persian army? I don't know. Oh God, my history is so bad. But that's cool, man. Those are two completely different knives, but the Praetorian tie is just, it's something else. It's just like, you have to experience it, you know, even if you're not buying it. Um, MC, at 2141 on Saturday, your ego is my number one priority. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm glad that you guys can all recognize that as a joke. 
right? We all have an ego, right? But I mean, you have to joke around. You have to, or your ego actually will get out of control. You have to make fun of yourself. I thoroughly believe in that, especially the more, if you start to acquire an audience for whatever it is in your, in your life, you have to be okay with making fun of yourself or your ego will absolutely get out of control. <laughs> uh, let's see here. What's my opinion on the 0804 CF? It's almost perfect. I mean, if you want a big knife that's light, that's purpose built, it's almost perfect. It's just got a little bit of double clutch. 142 people, we are close. We are 10 away from the record. So if you just popped in here and you're thinking, ah, this guy's boring, don't leave because I really need to feel good about my uh, record <laughs> on my live stream. Um, hang on a sec. No, it's not a Delica. It's an Endura. Um, somebody help me out with the um, the exclusive here. This is HAP40 and SUS410, which is the steel that I'm not familiar with. Um, this was an exclusive run through um, some retail, and I can't remember. Somebody said it when I unboxed it on Friday in the comments section. Um, but yeah, let's see. Seems logical. I think the Praetorians did fight against the Persians. Belisarius commanded the Romans and Xerxes commanded the Persians. Did I say Belisarius? Am I saying that correctly? God, my history is rust. I now I want to go. I want to go like watch a documentary because <laughs> so, I feel stupid and that's so interesting. I need to know. And uh, yeah, my I mean like you know I got a lot of information for the movie Three Hundred, but I don't feel like that's the that should be the primary source of. Where I'm getting the gist of the information there. Um, let's see here. Stacy, what's up? Another patron in here tonight. And also, of course, Knight. Stacy, you're going to be getting that purple uh, upgrade here fairly soon, I believe. A lot of you will be getting that those purple ones here within the next week. I can't believe it's already been three months since I put that out. Uh, I'm so appreciative of everybody who joined the, um, the Knights of the Round um, I'm glad you guys all have that this uh, sense of camaraderie, com camaraderie with each other. And at the same time, you know, it's like everybody mixes in perfectly. Whether you know the people who don't want to be a part of it, it, it's fine. You know, everybody works together and has a good time, and that's what's important. Absolutely. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Hollywood is the best source for history. <laughs> yeah, I, that's where I get most of my information because it certainly wasn't in high school or college. Um, Brian Ruppel, I picked up a custom bronze anodized Southern grind spider monkey from USA made blade. Yeah. Um, that's the best looking version of that knife. I've always thought that carbon fiber contrasts the best with bronze titanium, uh, carbon fiber up against a satin liner or tumbled liner, whatever. It just doesn't do it for me. Cause it's not, it's not as cool. I mean, or it's, it's basically, it's only slightly more cool than G10, right? G10 on bronze, yeah, it's okay, but carbon fiber on bronze, that's nice. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. That's the best way for sure. Um, Justin Hunter said, oh, you said my baby was nearly perfect. It is. Just needs just that double clutch, but you get around it. I mean, like, look at this. We got just a couple pieces of hardware, right? Easy disengagement, fantastic blade, right? It's just that double clutch. That's the only part. Plus full-size knife and it's light i mean it's so balanced and wieldy and you know it's it's just i like it just gotta you just gotta take that extra step to make sure it's like oh it's right there and then you gotta kick it shut and not chop the tips of your finger off um can't believe the zt0450 didn't make your tie frame lock list it's just a little bit small for me. I think it's a nice knife. And you know what? I need to review it on the channel. I handled it out of Cabela's because I thought maybe I wanted to pick it up. Um, and it just wasn't for me. But I should review it because it is a well-built knife. Uh, is Custom Smock SK23 good? Thinking of buying one. I've never handled a Custom Smock. Just the one from Spyderco. That's it. But the one from Spyderco is pretty sweet. Nick Shabazz. Wait. It's the Custom variant. Uh, from Mr. Smock, um, I think, I think, um, Nisha Baz did a recent review on that. Um, I can't remember what he said though. Tim Moore, I am overhydrated. You and I both, <laughs> you can never, they say you can never be too hydrated. Well then actually, yeah, you can. They call that waterlogged, right? 
Ah, let's see here. Do I own any karambits? I do not. I think karambits look cool, um, but I find them awkward and inappropriate for my lifestyle. That doesn't mean that they're not good for, you know, other people, for sure. And I know that the self-defense community very much likes karambits. Um, let's see, NY Blade ADC. Hey, got that helmet next to your name, buddy. <laughs> Looks good. I do prefer the Spider Coast Mock just for the price point. Yeah, Spider Coast Mock is, um, that's one of their, I would say that's, by most people's lists, as far as Spider Co knives go, because there's a billion of them, that's yeah, probably in most people's top 20 list for Spider Co. Um, does anybody else hate the Emerson Wave? I hate how it looks. I definitely hate how it looks. It's just like you're always carrying a tiny folding unicorn in your pocket. And I just, ugh, I don't like it. Um, can you become intoxicated from, uh, you can become intoxicated from water. True story. I did not know that. Um, maybe that's why I always felt the way that I did coming home from the pool after five and a half hours in the hot sun as a uh, as a, a 12-year-old Kansas boy. Um, it's a guardian tactical. What are we talking about here? Tactical Timmy. I don't know. There's always half the crowd talking about something else. John West, thank you so much for the congratulations, man. I appreciate it. Gregory Burke, please compare the sizes of the Chris Reeve Large Sabinja 31 with the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hocher. <laughs> No problem. I'm glad that that's become a thing um, on this channel. Um, there it is right there. Uh, yeah, it is super duper similar, except in the thickness. Um, the Ritter Hoax is a little bit thicker, and that's mainly because of the contouring and the overall length. Once you have the blade out, I mean, the Ritter Hoag has good ratios, but the Sabenza has, I mean, just excellent ratios. It's just a little bit longer. 8.3 8 inches, I think, is the uh, Sabenza. So, yeah. Good stuff. Sabenza 30, new Sabenza 31 I'm very much on board with. Really hope that they um, do something about those models out there that ha are experiencing lock rock. Apparently, they're, I don't know this for sure. I it, Listen, you you guys, if you think about buying a 31 and you've heard rumors of lock rock, it, it is something that some people are experiencing. There's not one on this guy, so it's not on everybody. If you have a question about that, you should definitely contact um, uh, Chris Reed Knives. Let's see here. Um, is, is Neves in here? If they are in here, I will say hello directly, but they might be, might be just hanging out. Andrew G. Python versus Sabenta. Ah, oh, man. So, I mean, like, in terms of all the way around, like, I mean, like, the things that I consider, like, good things about a folding knife, what I look for, you know, functionally in terms of disassembly, ergonomics, appearance, all the way around, I would score the Sabenza higher. But me personally, I like the Python. I mean, like, okay, there are things that bother me about the Python. And I talked about it in the review, right? So as far as like little things that I, uh, you know, just don't like about knives that bother me. But the problem is, um, it's just a lot cooler. Because it, it is on bearings, it does have the fidget factor. In terms of the overall appearance, I like this more. It is a, uh, it's an integral. Um, it goes a long ways with me. Uh, and it's a Peter Rosenzi design, and like everything that Peter Rosenzi does is just absolutely beautiful. So, I mean, in terms, if I was going to buy one, if it came down to both of them, me personally, I, I would go for the Paisan because the, I probably will never own a 31. I like the uh, Inkosi and the Umnums on more. But the 31 is a fantastic knife. Absolutely fantastic and absolutely recommendable. Um, it'll be so long before any, you know, before knives get to a point collectively where the Sabenza 31 is irrelevant or the Sabenza line is irrelevant. The Sabenza is like, it, it's, it's almost like uh, it, can't, it can't be killed. It's, it's just, it's too perfect, you know? It just lacks the fidget factor that some people like in the, the modern knife world. That's not supposed to be in there. Um, let's see here. What's your favorite CRK? I'm thinking about getting the Unumzon Tanto. Yeah, the Unumzon is probably my favorite CRK. The only thing that's a little bit dissatisfying is the how silent it is on lockout because of the O-rings around the external stops. Um, you could just take them off and it'll click, but... Yeah, the O-rings bothered me because I open it up and I don't get that satisfactory click. 146 people in here, guys. We are very, very close. 
Oh, 149 people in here. We are three away from breaking my live stream. I saw the, I saw the numbers, and I was like, ah, we probably won't break it tonight. No big deal. Let's just celebrate. Um, we are three away from breaking the record, so keep an eye on that number there, guys. Um, hey, now that we have a whole bunch more people in here, can we get the likes up to over 100 on the live stream? That would make me feel super good about myself. <laughs> oh, there we are. 151. 151. All 151 people in here, can you please like or, if you want to, dislike the live stream to make me feel good? 151. 152. We need one more person. Nobody leave. Nobody leave. So here, there it is. You guys saw it. 153. We have broken the record tonight. Oh my gosh, that makes me feel so good. I honestly, seriously, right around the top, we were kind of hovering around 100 people there, and I was like, eh, it's probably not going to happen tonight. It's fine, because that's not the point. Um, it was uh, it was just for fun. So, hey, thanks, guys. That was cool. Look, all those people, like, just barely hanging on, like, I wish this guy would wrap it up. I need to make a sandwich. <laughs> I don't care about his live stream. There you go. Raise swords if you want to for that. That's, that's fantastic. 154. Hey, Let's keep going. I mean, whatever it is, is what it is. I am very much enjoying doing um, live streams every weekend, you know, and, and, and this won't continue for forever. This is like this right now because I'm stuck at home. You know, that's the truth. I, I'm stuck at home and that's why I do the live streams. I honestly have thought about doing live streams in the middle of the week, but I've got too many videos, too many things to do and talk about. Too many other people's knives that are still sitting here um, to, uh, to, to stop and do live streams. And here's the other thing. I thought about uploading three times a day for you guys, but I, I got to assume that, that it gets annoying. You guys get so many notifications from me, especially if you're on Patreon and Instagram and Twitter. It's like, does Metal Complex ever shut the F up? Like, that has to be what you guys are thinking sometimes, Right. Um, and so I worry that I, sometimes I throw out too many, um, notifications. So, uh, holy goodness, there's 162 in here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. This is fun. Let's keep going. Hey, you know, Zell's throwing up alien faces. At some point, the live stream just goes completely bonkers and we lose sight of whatever it was that we were talking about. I'm going to go a little bit later than usual tonight, guys, but I'll tell you what. One of my, I mean, anybody who's got questions about knives, feel free. I'll keep answering questions about knives, no problem. But anybody who has weird questions for me that don't necessarily have to do with knives, I love answering stuff like that. Seriously, it's, I, I very much enjoy it. If you have a weird question for me, there's not too much that I won't answer. I'll let you know if you cross the line. <laughs> Uh, but I'm I'm a fairly open book, so if there's something you want to know, I will absolutely answer it. Um, what's my favorite knife steel? Favorite knife steel of all time is CPM 154, even though there is a trivial difference between CPM 154 and 154 CM. So I suppose I'll throw 154 CM in there as well. I, I very much love to sharpen it. I love to use it. Um, I love that it seems like it'll roll before it chips if it's heat treated correctly. It's just a wonderful steel, which really in turn makes me love Protec because that's their that's their choice. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad that you're here. I have to go to the bathroom so badly. You don't want to talk? Oh, well, can you guys... Oh, Slice of Ice is in here. Where does the white go when the snow melts? The white? That's something you, that is... I have no idea. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Thank you for the donation, Slicey, very much. I have, I have to be real quick. Let's be real quick. Okay. Sorry about that. Run? Yeah. <laughs> I ran as fast as I could. I'm, I'm live. There's people waiting. <laughs> uh, 
we are now joined by Mrs. Complex. Do you want the chair? Yeah, that's what I was sitting in. All right, here's the chair. <sighs> Did you get more of the um, Lugokinens or what? what is it called? No, I didn't. You didn't? No. You just have the one? Um, MC, did you wash your hands? Yes, with lightning speed and grace. <laughs> it went everywhere. The mirror is the mirror is covered in soap as well as all the walls. Uh, as you can imagine, the speed and friction does that sometimes. Why hasn't the earth been wait? <laughs> That's Mike. Why hasn't the earth been overtaken by mounds of mowed grass? That is a good question. My backyard looks like um like every apocalyptic Will Smith movie. Right, where the buildings are overrun with vines and stuff, and they're like, this used to be a pharmacy, and now the coyotes live in it. <laughs> That's what my backyard looks like. Oh, my gosh. Um, only 153 of us waiting while you pee. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Hey, nature calls, man. It's like the vines on my, uh, on my fence and the, all the broken buildings in my backyard, my post-apocalyptic wasteland. Um what I open, um, blue can, initials B and L. I am a basic bitch, for sure. Gregory Burke at Metal Complex. Are you finding yourself needing to help your wife stay calm with the kids underfoot away from their friends throughout this quarantine period? No, it's quite the opposite, actually. My wife has a much calmer demeanor than I do. Um, and I'm the one at home with the kids because she's still, she's got a, an essential, uh, she works in, in, um, the, in, I guess, what do I say, finance? Yes. Okay. Well, sorry. I mean, your job title is confusing. <laughs> um, so, but uh, yeah, so uh, she's been deemed essential. So um, she is at work and I'm at home and I'm with the kids and I freak out a lot easier. Not really. It's just the stress levels of kids running around and throwing yogurt and Play-Doh at everything, you know. Um, what other hobbies do you have? Most of the knife guys I know are also gun guys. I'm not a gun guy, but I'm also not, I mean, like I'm used to firearms because I live in Midwestern Kansas. So there's one everywhere, you know, it's like you buy an avocado at Walmart, you get a free firearm, you know, not really. Uh, hang on. I'll answer that question. Matt o. Jones, if you could get rid of any liquor, what would it be? Tequila. That is a story that no one will ever hear on this channel, but I can tell you right now, definitively tequila can go away forever. Um, but anyways, my other hobbies, um, Mike and what did he say? Yeah, super into the automotive industry. Not quite as much as Mike right there. That's why he knows that. Um, but uh, I, um, I, it's, it sounds dumb to say going to the gym, but I mean, it's an, I'm enough into it. Um, I like the science behind powerlifting and bodybuilding and just general fitness. That's actually what I went to, to college for originally. Um, so I suppose you'd call that a hobby. I'm a huge gamer. I have no time to do it anymore, but um, the, my favorite uh, video games, um, the Elder Scrolls from Morrowind through Skyrim currently, and I'm waiting on Elder Scrolls 6. I like Borderlands 1, 2, and 3, World of Warcraft, Diablo 2. I was a huge Diablo 2 fan, big Diablo 3 fan, waiting for on Diablo 4. Uh, Dark Souls, specifically number 2 and number 3 are my favorites. I know, Blasphemy. Uh, Dark Souls original was a lot of people like that. Um, let me think, what other games do I like? I love Fable, the original, and I played two and three, even though they were mostly garbage. Um, but um, yeah, I, I like those. There's a lot, of, a lot of big RPGs. I love Final Fantasy. Um, I've played almost all the Final Fantasies. I can't wait for the new one to come out. No, no, uh, sorry, Justin. I appreciate the donation, but unfortunately, that's a story that nobody will ever hear. I can't believe I said I meant I'll give you a hint. My my parents' basement is completely redone. Um, carpet, walls, everything. <laughs> that's the that's all the more you're gonna get out of that story. Um yeah, Fable One was a great game. Just like the quintessential standard RPG story, right? With a little bit of odd British humor mixed in there. Absolutely. Yeah, I still play Skyrim. I still do. Um the mods are uh Mike's laughing about the basement. <laughs> um, but yeah, I still play Skyrim. The the mods that enhance the game, not the ones that allow you to cheat, but the ones that enhance the game are really fun. Uh, back, Batman Arkham series. So my buddy Mitch, that's Endure88, um, he's a big fan of the Batman Arkham series. I'm ashamed to say I've never played Assassin's Creed um, or Half-Life. Um, that's 
That's an unfortunate. Absolutely. Favorite race in Elder Scrolls? Um, Nord and, and Orc. I always, it's one or the other. And every now and then I try, I'm like, I'm going to be a magic, I'm going to be like a nimble magic user. And he gets to six and I'm like, I hate, I hate him. I hate him. I just, I'm going to drown him in a river and start over. You know, I just can't stand it. Um, what'd they say? Where is it? Bottom. What's the carbon fiber knife in the middle uh, row, third from the right? One, two, three. This one right here. This is the ZT0804 CF. Sadly discontinued and owned by Justin the Hunter, who's right there in the comments with you. Um, this guy was sent along to, um, actually it was reviewed, sent back, and he sent it back again so I could get on my Silence Compact complex channel uh let's plug the silence complex channel even though we are dying because this is kansas and we're using the equivalent of dial-up internet um but yeah the silence complex uh, silent complex channel if you're not subscribed feel free to free to subscribe um it is a much smaller but much more and much more simple channel uh for people who don't want to hear me ramble um what's the blue kaiser on the bottom uh also justin's <laughs> this is the kaiser shoal um, with the uh, more colorful anodizing option, you can get this very inexpensively right now. Titanium frame lock flipper with S35VN, great action, great build quality, very similar to a Hinder XM18. Pretty sure these are on sale between 130 and 140 bucks right now. Very similar to a Hinder XM18. For those of you who wanted to handle one but don't want to fork over 425, Kaiser Shoal is not a bad option. Um, let's see here. Archery was OP. Yeah, as soon as you get the, uh, you're talking about Skyrim. As soon as you get that skill up and your sneaks up and you all, you can get all that critical damage stacked. You just crawl, you just go through the caves and the people talking. You know, blah blah blah. I used to blah blah blah, but I took an arrow to the knee and then you put an arrow in his face and you're done with the dungeon. <laughs> that's that's how it was. Like it's, it's like as soon as you hit like level forty or something, you can't be stopped. Um, let's see here. Uh, Man Mangana Steel, woo, congrats on 15K. Hey, thank you so much, buddy. We're actually not quite there yet, but I thought, eh, whatever. <laughs> By morning, I'm, I mean, I'm hoping it'll be at 15K. This will make sense, right? So let's see. Yes, Knifer Man, we watched The Office on repeat in this house. How many times do you think we've been through The Office? She's shaking her head with like the most... She's forced to watch The Office on... Re like, she likes The Office, but I want to watch it... Con like, it's like, well, I'm, I'm going to go, like, sweep the kitchen. Let's turn on The Office, you know? And then it stays on, and we watch, like, all of... Or we watch half of season four on a Sunday afternoon. Um, I love that show. Absolutely. It's a, the, the best all-around humor I think I've ever seen. Um, let's see here. Have you ever played Mountain Blade Warband or Mountain Blade Bannerlord? No, I have not. I have not played that. But it sounds like just the name sounds like something I'd be into. Oh, how the turntables. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. What is the quote? Okay, for Office fans, if you guys have not gone and watched the blooper reel, the most legendary blooper reels of all time exist in the different seasons of the office. Go pull them up on YouTube. Arguably, and some of the blooper reels are 15 to 20 minutes long, and it is some of the funniest stuff you've ever seen. Mike, if you're in here, you can help me out. What does what it's 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 uh, when Michael Scott is sitting with um, David Wallace in that lounge, and he he there's some saying where he's like. He's like, over the lips, through the gums, look out stomach, here we go. And it, and it obviously was not, a, it was a line that was ad-libbed, and David Wallace's character was supposed to just be like, well, okay, that was a weird Michael Scott thing to say, but the guy who plays David Wallace, it, it broke him. He wasn't expecting it, and he lost it. Every single time I see that blooper, I lose my mind. And my wife thinks it's mildly funny. But I lose it, right? The kick rest of the couch comes up. Whatever I'm holding, holding a bologna sandwich gets chucked across the room. I love. I think that's one of the funniest bloopers I've ever seen. Um, yeah, the chili spill is classic. Uh, let's see here. She's evil like a hobbit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know there's a few people in here who've seen the office bloopers. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I'm sorry for the lag tonight. I got to reset the router and everything. 
Uh, let's see. Pocket Tank. Thank you so much, buddy. Companies should produce more left-handed knives. Yeah, they should. Um, what do they always say? It's like 10% of people um, carry, uh, you know, are left-handed. Is that is that the actual statistic? Um, why can't knives just always have the option for let? Listen, I get that you. It doesn't always make sense to you know like make uh, like for for frame locks, right? To manufacture fifty percent of the line as right-handed frame locks and fifty percent as left-handed frame locks, it doesn't make sense. But at least have the option, right? We got there's so many knives that are just not. It's like well, sorry, you know, hinderer, hinderer. What? I know we can pay for a hundred dollar scale, right? But just may like, come on, man. Left-handed. So many knives have the option, and it's great. Spider Co's got it figured out, right? You don't need it. You don't need it to be cut in. You need a. You need three screws. You can't do it with two. You're gonna get play. You need three screws. Spider Co does it exactly right. There's not gonna be any play in the three hole, you know, deal. But Spider Co, you know, this is a better clip. Either the winch type or the MSG deep carry clip. We're talking, we're doing well, that subject change thing, and I always do. Uh, Koenig, Arias are going to be back in stock. I'm sure they will. I'm sure they will. Um, I'm hoping that uh, both uh, Koenig um, and Holt uh, either um, are able to increase production massively, kind of like what, you know, Hinder did at some point in, in like uh, early 2013, early 2014, and just start being able to mass produce because of popularity or i'm hoping they collaborate and we see production variants you know i'd love to see like a an auto specter from protech um or you know something or other from from koenig i don't i don't know it would be cool um let's see hey brighton card welcome to the knights of the round everybody raise your swords for brighton i appreciate that enjoy all the sword emojis, your helmet, and this uh, barrage of uh, the raising of swords from your fellow knights. Absolutely. Excuse me. You see all the swords? Did you see that last time? Oh. I just want somebody. Because, see, like, I can't hear them talk. So I want to hear, like, you're the only other person here. And I want you to go, wow, cool. But you don't think it's that neat. <laughs> Uh, auto air uh, auto uh, Arius would be awesome too. I always say Arius, but Arius. Uh, Freedom Van, thank you so much for the donation. Check out the Thai ZT0450, same size as the bug out. Um, okay, yeah, I'm sure that um, somebody you know has one that, that might uh, let me uh, borrow it. So, yeah, absolutely. Any other random questions? I'm gonna go and tell um. 10 15 uh any random questions you have for me i'll answer i also i will also continue to answer uh knife related questions as well andrew tool says favorite office blooper is kevin on michael's lap dressed as santa and his leg goes to sleep oh <laughs> well, it's weird hearing kevin talk as a normal person because when i think of kevin i just think of this big blundering idiot which is that's probably how you you know view me on a day to day basis right um, Taco Bell or not, Taco Bell all the way. Taco Bell is my favorite thing that he, like, it's like, you know, if somebody was like, Taco Bell or air, go. I'd be like, Taco Bell, wait, oh, I need air to breathe. Ah, dang it. Okay, air. You know, that'd be my instinct. Do you think the virus will affect, yeah, I, I, I don't know, Blake. Um, I, I have no idea. I'm sorry. I, I mean, it's in, in some Scenarios I might elaborate more there, but I, I truthfully don't know. I don't know that anything I could say to offer offer any meaningful clar clarity with that question. Um, most expensive knife that I've ever owned. Most expensive knife that I've ever owned. What? Oh, I th I'm sorry. I thought it was a gesture of confusion. <laughs> um, most expensive knife that I've ever owned was the Medford Praetorian tie. The configuration that I had it in was a thirteen or fourteen hundred dollar configuration. Um, and then right below that, I've owned some custom uh, hinder builds that reached eight hundred dollars. Um, but yeah, a lot of knives between the four and six hundred dollar range for sure. Um, wait, it's already eleven ten. What is there? A time change tonight? 
No, Kiefer said 10 15. It's already 11 10. Oh, that's be, it's because he's in a different time zone. Ah, Kiefer, you, you know, so you old so and so. <laughs> James Styles, favorite Ferrum Forge, Wii variants or the originals? Um, favorite original, the Mordax for sure. The OG Mordax, not that button lock. The button lock's cool. It's one right here in tie. People are always shocked. Well, how would you get a titanium one? Uh, yeah, they didn't make many titanium ones. Um, favorite B variant, Archbishop 2.0. That thing is phenomenal. Phenomenal, the Archbishop 2.0. The why? I mean, that, that should be a thing that is always being made. I mean, that I love that thing basically as much as I love the ZT0562. I love it. It's just more fidgety because it's got the, um, the thumb, the little slot, and it doesn't have double clutch. So, and the flipper tab is shaped correctly, in my opinion. Um, are, are Boker knives good? I mean, yeah, they can be. I mean, it, it's it's like a lot of uh, they, Boker has the potential, um, you know, with a lot of really good designs. I mean, that like it's it's uh, the quality comes out in some of their higher price stuff. Some of their lower price stuff, it's like, eh. But I mean, it's in in some. I I don't like their lower price stuff as much as some of the other really obvious lower price stuff that you can get out there. Civivi, Bastec, CJRB, they're kind of doing it right. Uh, Boker does better in the mid or, you know, like in kind of the mid range to their upper range. Uh, they do a little bit better. Uh, let's see. Uh, favorite Benchmade. My favorite bench right now is absolutely 100% the Super Freak. A close second, the Mini Crooked River. These are fantastic. Uh, probably right behind those two. Benchmade Griptilian Hogue, it still has the amazing plethora of aftermarket parts available to it that the Ritter Hogue will never have by contrast, um, and custom shop, all that stuff. And then right behind that, functionally, the 940, uh, yeah, I don't know why, you didn't ask that, you just asked what my favorite one was. <laughs> uh, let's see here, we broke the live stream record tonight, do it. It went up to like, what, what was the highest count? Can somebody tell me what we were at at one point? Was it 162 or did we go up higher than that? Jesse, uh, edge up WI. Y'all have a great night. High fives all around. Congrats, Complex. Thank you so much, Jesse. I really, really appreciate that. Another patron. Thank you so much. 163. Okay, multiple people seeing 163. So that's the new record. I'll depend. I mean, I don't keep track. I always depend on somebody <laughs> keeping that for me. I'll, I'll try to remember 163. And I have to do it. I, I am reminding myself right now, the reason that we're keeping track of this is because we're doing another giveaway because we broke the record. Um, it'll be something in the budget uh, realm that I'll be giving away, but I think you guys will be happy with it for sure. Sometime next week, I will do it during one of the unboxing videos. So it won't be its own video. So make sure that you check out all of the videos so that you don't miss it. <laughs> Favorite fixed blade. Um, oh, that's so the, uh, the Chris Reeve, um, is it the Niala? The Chris Reeve Niala is absolutely, uh, my favorite fixed blade of all time. Uh, I believe Shaker sent it to me and in uh, the brown micarta. I would have preferred it in the gray micarta, but that is a wonderful, wonderful fixed blade. The price on it also shocked me. It's something like 240 250 bucks for a Chris Reeve. Amazing. But um, here, very recently, I've come to love... I'm, I'm always going to love the SE5. Um, I think the SE6 is great. I liked GSO a lot before they got into all that mess with the... Uh, whatever. I don't want to, no drama. GSOs were cool. Uh, the Rat 5 is amazing. This freaking thing. The um, off-grid alpha dog is absolutely fantastic. I mean, yeah, it's a monster, but it's a functional monster. Most comfortable knife handle I've ever felt in my entire life. And I mean that. I'm not just doing, I'm not just, you know, it's not metal complex dialogue where everything's the greatest thing in the world. No, I mean, seriously, this is the most comfortable handle on a knife that, that has ever existed. It, it it is absolutely 100% made with human hands. Um, this thing can chop, it can pry, it can probably be a hammer, um, and uh, at the same time, it'll it'll cut too. It's got a convex final edge made out of bo uh, Bowler K110, which is fancy D2. 
but fantastic at something like 80 to 90 bucks. That's also down in my Amazon store. Shameless plug, you can find that knife down in my Amazon store under most recommended fixed blades and a whole bunch of other, there'll be a review on this guy coming up. Love it. What do we have for time here? I'm gonna knock some stuff off my, let me check here guys and gals. XM18, if you have the funds, which XM18? Is that what you're asking? Um, if that's what you're asking right now, I think the coolest one out there is the the coolest XM18 that's available is the um, the Fullard Spear from DLT. But the coolest in the coolest unique variants of XM18s that you can get on the market right now, in my opinion, are only offered at USA Made Blade, and here's why: he can do factory approved anodizing. And uh, Scott Whittington has some amazing patterns that he can apply to those. In some cases, he's able to do a little bit of custom uh, prints on anodizing. So if you want a special and a unique XM18, my honest suggestion is, is you can, you know, capitalize on the already, you know, extremely customizable nature of an XM18 and get one hyper unique from USMA Blade. Their Animascus patterns are amazing. Um, you should definitely check them out. Um, I, I, I mean that. I mean, it, people will tell you, uh, USA Made Blade is a great place to buy an XM18. Um, uh, just ordered myself a pair of three cam with G10 scales, with black blade, and a lynch clip. Going to replace my native five for EC on my mini sheepdog. Yeah, um, pair of three uh, G10 with the uh, MXG or lynch clip is one of, if, you know, it's one of the greatest EDC knives of all time. This guy, I mean, as you guys saw here recently with my most carried knives video, it gets carried more than anything. It's just, it's just perfect. Gift for my wife. Um, what should my next knife be up to $300? My, my automatic instinct is to tell you ZTO 562Ti if you um, have not already owned it. Um, uh, up to $300. If the A-Purvis Zerks is available anywhere, that's another gigantic yes. Um, trying to think what else in there. It's like a massive, obvious one. Hmm. Those are my two. Those are my two big thumbs up there. Um, but uh, we has a lot of amazing stuff in that price range. You can't go wrong. Um, I know I'm just like browse, <laughs> which isn't an answer. Those are my two top answers. ETO 562Ti. And if you can find an A-Purv of Zerks out there, which I, it's always confusing, you know, what, what's available, you know, for those knives, but because they're limited run knives, but yeah, for sure. And the CF is great too. The CF's great. I always, I just always prefer titanium. Um, absolutely. All right. What are we at here for time? We're at 118. Guys and gals. Oh, uh, Shaker MT says, I carry my Zerks way more than my 0562 Ti, probably because it doesn't have double clutch. Am I right? Guys. That is going to be it for tonight's live stream. Thank you for supporting this channel. Thanks for coming and hanging out with us. Um, thank you for helping us break the live stream record tonight. Um, this is amazing. And uh, I'm, I'm just in shock that this channel keeps growing. Um, I'm, I'm going to keep going. I've got an enormous amount of content. As you guys can see here, there's a lot of stuff on the table you guys haven't seen yet. There's even more stuff on the off to the left here that you guys haven't seen. So there's some really fun stuff coming. Um, and uh, I've got a lot of ideas for the future. A lot of projects that were put on halt because of the, the COVID situation. But um, yeah, there's some big plans for this channel in the future. So anyways, guys, thanks so much for your support. Um, we very much appreciate it. And it just uh, it brings me a lot of joy knowing that you guys are enjoying the content that I'm putting out because this is my passion. Um, this is absolutely my dream and you guys are helping me realize it. So anyways, guys, thanks so much for hanging out. Have an excellent uh, evening and an excellent rest of your weekend. Bye.